everyone today we are going to discuss about erythropoiesis and its regulation it is one of the most hot topic in whole blood physiology so you must know that at least one or the other question comes from the erythropoiesis and associated topics let's get on i am going to cover only two competencies in this class listing the sites of the erythropoiesis in fetus and adult and describing the stages of erythropoiesis and its regulation we will start from the basics definition of erythropoiesis erythropoiesis is the process of formation which includes the development maturation and the release of red blood cells i also discussed in earlier videos if you want you can check that one sites of erythropoiesis before going to discuss about the fetus we will look at our cells means in adults the bone contains medullary cavity which has bone marrow here exactly the erythropoiesis occurs looking to the fetus all of us know that bone formation takes some amount of time before the formation of bones there are some organs where exactly the erythropoiesis occurs at exactly the second week of the gestation erythropoiesis starts in the yolk sac it contains cells with multi lineage differentiating capabilities you can also see this from the graph i have mentioned here it's called the mesoblastic stage we know that fetus grows as fetus grows liver within the fetus also grows it takes the function of the yolk sac and starts forming the erythrocytes so uh, it's at the fifth week of the gestation you can also observe from the figure that spleen is also involved in the erythropoiesis it's mainly involved in the second trimester of the gestation once our fetus reaches fifth month of the fetal life marrow cavities are formed in the bone so soon they become erythropoietic start synthesizing the rbcs once they started they continued to the post fetal life also uh, as we already know that in adults also the medullary stage is involved before going to the erythropoiesis proper steps we will look at the general steps of the hemopoiesis here stem cells are converted to the progenitor cells progenitor cells are converted to the intermediate or the precursor cells then these get matured to form the mature cells or the final cells looking at the stem cells proper it has two unique properties of cell in, uh, renewal and the cell differentiation progenitor cells are of two types cfub and the cfue cfub stands for colony forming unit blast and the cfue stands for colony forming unit erythrocytes looking to the proper steps of the erythropoiesis we will jump to the next slide here we have intermediary or the precursor cell stages and also the matured cell stages in this slide you are going to see more normal blast words you better replace with the erythroblast word because it sounds better than the normal blast in general during erythropoiesis we must keep always three points in our mind the cell size progressively reduces and the size of nucleus and the number of nucleoli decreases chromatin material condenses and finally nucleus disappears the staining reaction of the cytoplasm changes from deep basophilic to the polychromatophilic which is nothing but acidophilic plus the basophilic and finally to the acidophilic type this occurs because mainly due to the gradual reduction in the quantity of the rna material rna material is acidic so it stains basic pro erythroblasts are the first identifiable cells of the erythrocyte series the cytoplasm is less in amount and occupies only about 20% of the cell it has high concentration of polyribosomes high content of dna which indicates vigorous protein synthesis in the cell nucleus is large and occupies about 80% of the cell and it also contains multiple nucleoli here i mentioned about 2 to 5 nucleoli 
mitosis is also present but the hemoglobin is not yet formed in the cell early erythroblast or basophilic erythroblasts these cells exhibit the active mitosis here nucleus is large and occupies 3/4 of the cell area nucleus is composed of dark violet heterochromatin clumps interspersed with the pink clumps of the euchromatin the chromatins are connected by linear strands this often gives the nucleus the appearance of the wheel of spokes hemoglobin starts synthesizing in this step intermediate or polychromatic erythroblasts the word polychroma refers to the multiple colors or more than one colors we will discuss why it's called polychromatic hemoglobin synthesis is increased which makes the cell acidophilic and the presence of the rna material makes the cytoplasm eosinophilic thus the mixture of acidophilic hemoglobin and the eosinophilic rna in cytoplasm makes it polychromatic in this step mitosis is sluggish and nucleus is small and occupies about half of the cell area late or orthochromatic erythroblasts here cytoplasm is deeply eosinophilic giving the appearance of the orthochromatic cells and mitosis is absent the nucleus is small and pycnotic at the beginning sometimes dark nuclear chromatin material are arranged in a typical pattern to give the appearance of the cartwheel finally the nucleus disintegrates hemoglobin hemoglobin synthesis increases and also it completes at this stage now precursor cell steps are completed now it's time to get matured the orthochromatic or the late erythroblasts get converted into reticulocytes and reticulocytes then converted into erythrocytes i have made a video on erythrocytes already and my next video will be on reticulocytes because it has separate competencies revising from the above the pro erythroblasts the cells which are before the formation of the erythroblasts and the in erythroblasts we have three stages early intermediate and the late once the late erythroblast stages disappears nothing but it forms the reticulocytes reticulocytes to rbcs very simple must know or the important points in the erythropoiesis these are required for your viva so please concentrate here extrusion of the nucleus takes place in late erythroblast stage reticulocytes are non nucleated conversion of reticulocytes to rbcs takes place uh, within 1 to 2 days hemoglobin production starts in pro erythroblast hemoglobin first appears in the intermediate erythroblast in be in between these points you must not confuse regulation of erythropoiesis most often we concentrate on the steps of the erythropoiesis and forget to read about the regulation of the erythropoiesis i will tell you that it's also very important to know about the uh, regulation of the erythropoiesis here we have feedback control the functional feedback and the end product feedback what are the functions of the rbcs rbcs uh, are required for the tissue oxygenation when there is reduced tissue oxygenation it stimulates the erythropoiesis through the uh, erythropoietin i will tell you what exactly the erythropoietin in the next slide and end product feedback rbcs are the end products of the erythropoiesis when there is hemolysis it itself the hemolysis itself uh, stimulate the erythropoiesis factors controlling the erythropoiesis mainly divided into three factors three major factors hormonal factor dietary factors and the other factors hormonal hormonal factors contain erythropoietin androgens estrogens thyroxine uh, anterior pituitary hormones such as growth hormone tsh acth lh fh and the prolactin corticosteroids and the interleukins all these are stimulatory except the estrogen as we know that uh, females have less number of rbcs than the males that's due to they contain estrogen which inhibits the uh, erythropoiesis erythropoietin 
is the hormone which mainly regulates the erythropoiesis. It is produced mainly by the interstitial cells in the peritubular capillary bed of the kidney. In renal system, I will discuss when I will show you the glomerular apparatus. Functions of the erythropoietin It mainly stimulates the several steps in the erythropoiesis. It acts mainly on the progenitor cells and the early precursor cells. It decreases the cell cycle length of the precursor cells and therefore enhances the mitosis. It facilitates the maturation of the normoblasts or the erythroblasts. It increases the hemoglobin synthesis in erythroblasts. It acts on the stem cells to promote their transformation towards the erythroid series and it also stimulates early, early release of the immature erythrocytes, those are reticulocytes, into the circulation. Dietary factors, it includes vitamins, proteins and the minerals. In vitamins, uh, we have vitamin B12, folic acid and the vitamin C. Vitamin B12 and the folic acid are required for the synthesis of the DNA. And vitamin C is for the absorption of iron from the uh, gut. Where it converts Fe plus 3 to Fe plus 2. Proteins are required for the synthesis of the globin in the hemoglobin. And minerals, iron, copper and the cobalt are also required. There are some other factors which influence the erythropoiesis. Uh, those are intrinsic factor, environmental, environmental factors, drugs and the chemicals. We know that vitamin B12 is also called as extrinsic factor of castel. To absorb vitamin B12, we required intrinsic factor of castel which is secreted from the oxyntic cells of the gastric glands. Environmental factors are hypoxia. As we know that when there is a reduced tissue oxygenation, we require more amount of oxygenation. Increasing the erythrocytes will uh, compensate that one. So, hypoxia increases the erythropoiesis. Drugs and the chemicals. Vasoconstrictor agents like catecholamines, nucleotides like uh, cyclic AMP, NAD, NADP and the products of the red cell destructions such as uh, cobalt salts and the thyroxine also stimulates the erythropoiesis. This is the end of our today's class. If you have any doubt, please put them down in the comments. And thanks for watching video completely. Stay well, study well. See you soon. Bye bye.